before we knew you from Daily Show, uh, you did stand up. I, uh, yeah. when, when did you start stand up? Do you remember? Uh, I started doing stand up when I was in college. Yeah. I was, uh, I think the first time I did stand up, I was like 19, 20 years old in uh, North Carolina. And I, the first place I ever performed was a comedy club in Raleigh, North Carolina uh, called. Yeah! Oh, sure. Yeah. Yes. They don't even know which comedy club. They're just like, yeah, yeah thank God Raleigh's got comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, uh, Charlie Goodnights. Dude, do I performed Charlie Goodnights. Yeah. I performed there. It's yeah. a great club. It was a great club. That was the first time I ever did stand-up. I did an open mic there where they gave you three minutes, and I had all three minutes of my jokes. I was all prepared. I got up on stage, and I burned through it in a minute. Oh, and dude, I didn't, I was just had two minutes left and I was like, hey, you know what? Leave him one more. And <laughs> I just, you left after one minute. I left after a minute. Yeah, that's wild. I did that too. Yeah. Cause you did think you? in your head, you're like, oh my God, I have, I have, I have five minutes. Yeah. Uh, did you ever get heckled? Oh yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's like part and parcel of starting out is just getting heckled. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I did a show, uh, when I moved to Los Angeles, I did an open mic and it was in a, like a, venue that also had a pool table in the back and there was like a pool table and a jukebox and there was a guy playing pool and he walked all the way up to the front of the stage and he was like hey i'll give you a hundred dollars if you stop talking <laughs> he just wanted to listen to music he just wanted he was like let me turn on the jukebox i'll give you a hundred dollars that's probably more than you're getting paid for the gig that was that would have been the first time i ever got paid <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll do this. This is, yeah, this seems like a sweet deal. If, if my entire comedy career is people pay tickets to see me show up to a place and then they all pool their money together to get me to shut up. <laughs> that's a great career. That's still a great career. Yeah, he's going to be at the Tempe Improv yeah. and pool your money together and we'll start a Kickstarter to make sure he never says anything. <laughs> Uh, well, thank God you, you said stuff because you're a great stand-up, and uh, I, love, uh, I love your show, uh, Wyatt Sinek's Problem Areas. Uh, this is season two. It is. Uh, and every, every season you focus on one subject. Right. And this season is education. That's right. How did you choose, uh, why did you choose education? Uh, we chose education. In the first season, we did policing, and then we wound up talking a lot about education, and so it felt like, oh, okay, there's maybe something here, and then... As our season was wrapping up, the teacher strikes that started in West Virginia and kind of spread throughout the country, there was a lot of conversation around those strikes. And then over the summer, you saw people writing about it. And so it felt like, OK, this is maybe something that people are kind of talking about and is bubbling under the surface a little bit. And maybe there's more here. And so that's why we did it. Also, I thought maybe I could finally figure out what the hell is going on at Clown College. And <laughs> You know, just really, let's crack that nut open. Yeah, yeah. That's what, technically education. Yeah, what is going on over there? That's fascinating. Yeah, I don't know. Their no. lawyers would never get back to us. <laughs> Nothing. So, yeah, uh, was... what, tell me about this week's episode. What's happening here? So this week's episode, uh, we're focusing on sex ed. This is sex ed. So yeah, so we wanted to go and just talk about sex ed because there's not like comprehensive sex ed throughout the country or anything like that. And a lot of parents will often push back against having sex ed in their classes, uh, in their classrooms. And so, and sex ed is more than just about like how to have sex with somebody. Uh, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot to it and uh, it impacts a lot of students and especially uh, it impacts like LGBTQ students and uh, they uh, having like quality sex ed is actually beneficial for them and their education. Uh, just getting people to be like, you know, sort of understanding and tolerant and uh, otherwise they get bullied. And so I think the clip that we're going to see now is uh, just a kid who had a, had a bad experience um, at another school and just what kind of sex ed, having like comprehensive sex ed means for kids like that. I want to show everyone a clip here. Here's a look at this week's episode of Wyatt Sinek's Problem Areas. Check it out. That was bullied a lot. Whenever you get bullied, though, it's never that you did something. It rarely seems like it's about you. It often seems like it's about them. them. Mm -hmm. Hurt people, hurt people. Someone should put that on a T-shirt. <laughs> For real. You can make a lot of money. It. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you can make a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine just someone like, oh, yeah, no, I, this is a good T-shirt. I'm going to walk around. Hurt people, hurt people. And then but goes, it's true. It is. Like, I, if you really think about it, you just sit there like, or the real eyes, real eyes, real eyes. Say it one more time. Real eyes, real lies, real lies. I gotcha. All right. Yeah. Okay. 
that bottle. Yeah. <laughs> this is definitely a state where weed is legal. Why it's Tanak, everybody! Why it's Tanak's problem areas airs Fridays at 11 p.m. on HBO. Uh, uh -huh. It's on and on and on. Uh,